Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cottrell here with the Tiger, Christian Savoie, who will be fighting in the main event of FLA 13 in Moncton, New Brunswick against Christian the Ghost Tremaine. The Battle of the Christians. Christian Savoie, how are you, sir? I'm great, brother. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's good to speak with you. Uh, we've only interviewed once before, and unfortunately that video was never published because your fight was canceled before it happened. So it's nice, uh, you know, knock on wood that this fight's going to take place. Knock on freaking wood, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm really praying, but I think she's, uh, she's a girl. Yeah. I spoke with your opponent, Christian Tremaine, yesterday, and he seems like he's in good shape and good spirits. He's looking forward to it, too. So what's it like when you have two guys who are both – fighters and they want to fight because that seems like it's becoming increasingly rare these days you've got a lot of dropouts in fights a lot of injuries that are are questionable sometimes so you know for a fight to actually happen it's kind of a miracle these days yeah dude it's uh it's nonsense man to be honest um i think when guys pull out of fights you know they, they there needs to be like a doctor's note of sorts you know like we just need more insurance you know because i'm not denying that that guys get injured and stuff you know like of course guys get injured but um but yeah man there needs to be more security for the fighters you know because like mm -hmm. you know what i've gone through this past year man and at the end of the day you know you're just you're putting your body through so much you're you know from in my case you're denying work you're making all these sacrifices just to show up to to, to fight you know and uh then these guys are always pulling out you know so it's uh it's a tough business, man. I hope there's a there's a solution. Yeah. And all the things you mentioned are true, yes. But the one thing that, you know, the casual fight fan might not realize is that when you have an opponent that pulls out from a fight, not only do you lose that training camp, but basically you're losing time. You're losing time into your life. You don't get that time back. 100%, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what it is. And, and at the end of the day, too, man, like, you know, um, I'm a believer in like training camps. I don't even want to say I'm a believer. It's just science, you know, like you can only peak as an athlete a couple times mm -hmm. a year, you know, and just like putting your body through, you know, that the, the, the stress of a training camp and not getting to compete and say another opportunity comes four weeks later. Like it is what it is, right? This is the, the field that we're in, but yeah, it would, it would definitely be nice to have more security with opponents. <laughs> For sure. Well, hopefully that won't be an issue uh, coming up soon at FLA 13. And something else fans might not realize is that this is actually going to be for the first ever professional title belt for Fight League Atlantic. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. I'm excited. So tell me about your uh, your training camp for this. And, and you know, I'm, I'm guessing it's been the same as other training camps. Or have you done anything different? Um, well, uh, I... I've been doing the same thing I did for my last fight and uh, this just train at home. Um, you know, I, I work with Alin up in Ontario. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I've done a few times this year, but um, yeah, man, I feel good at home. Um, I've got, you know, great coaches, training partners and uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I just enjoy being home too. So I, I'm, I'm definitely going to go back up the house of champions, you know, hopefully after this fight, but, uh, but uh, I, I got a good thing going on here. Mm -hmm. The good thing you have going on there could mean a few things, and one of them has to be the fact that Fight League Atlantic is in your your neck of the woods, and they've just become a, a fantastic organization. I mean, there are 13 events in, and they've been impressive from the start. And, you know, as good as they were right off the bat, because Derek Clark and John Foster were really keen and diligent in a lot of ways, it seems like every event just gets better and better. And I'm not just saying that to, to, to Brown Nose. I mean, that's that's a literal statement. I mean, they take their... There are areas for improvement from the event before, and they just add to it. And so the fighters are taken well care of. I mean, you get tracksuits and stuff like that, and, you know, um, the fans are taken care of, and they they put on excellent fight cards. And most importantly, like, they're building up their roster, right? Like, a lot of amateur fights, but those amateur fighters are getting experience. They're getting more fights. They're turning professional. And now there's a professional belt. Tell me what it's like fighting for Fight League Atlantic, in your experience. Yeah, they're, they're great, man. Um what I like about them too is like, I don't think they've ever canceled an event. I think one event got canceled or something because of like a storm. There was a hurricane or something. Yeah. 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 But aside from that, man, they've never canceled an event. And like, we we're just talking about like, you know, opponents pulling out, man. And like the, the anxiety of that, like, man, like some of these promotions, you don't even know if the, 
the freaking event's going to happen, you know? Mm, so, yeah. you know, with, with FLA, you're, you're practically guaranteed to have a show. And, uh, yeah, like you said, man, they've, they've really built their roster. Um, I remember just like, like prior to my fight with Dorian there, I was at one of their events and like their main event was like an O and O guy against an O and one guy, you know? And now, you know, you, you got guys like me headlining and then you got like, you know, a roster of, of good pros, you know? So yeah, man, they've done a great job, um, production wise and building the roster and everything, man. They're, uh, they're great, man. I'm really, really great. Mm -hmm. Your opponent, Christian Tremaine, he's got a record that's uh, not as impressive as, as he might want it to be, and he admits to that. But I think he's one of those fighters that his, his skill set is better than his record reflects. What do you think about him as an opponent, and how do you see yourself taking him on? Yeah, he's good, man. You know, he just beat uh, a top prospect in the Maritimes there. and uh, mm -hmm. you know, Cameron. Yeah, and his, um, his confidence high. And, uh, you know... Yeah, man, it's a fight game, dude. And, uh, you know, I'll be the first to say that, like, records can be deceiving, you know. I've mm -hmm. I've trained with guys who are, like, 7 and 4 who are way better than guys who are, like, 6 and 0, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. You know this, you know, like, like yep. you know, and, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, I think he's good, yeah. What does a training day look like for you right now? Um, so I kind of have a different approach than a lot of guys, man. And I've just learned this throughout the years and like, and like, um, just, yeah, just years of experience, um, figuring out like what works for me, but I usually train about, you know, four days a week and, uh, I'll train two times a day usually. And I'll, I'll go hard. Like I train hard. I find a lot of fighters and this is what I used to do, you know, like it's typical to train five, six days a week, two, three times a day. And, uh, I just noticed that that never worked for me. It will, it would always leave me burnt out and, and, and injured. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a very vocal guy on, on PEDs, uh, performance enhancing drugs. You know, I, I take none of that and I just find like my body breaks down, man. If, if I, if I do too much volume. So, um, I've mm -hmm. taken more of a, uh, intensity approach. So, uh, I'm only training a couple days a week, but my intensity is really high on those days, you know? So that's, that's kind of how I do things differently. Do you do any sparring? Yep. Yep. I, uh, I, I spar, but again, I would say, um, I probably spar a lot lighter than most guys. And, not as frequent. And I would say that's just due to like, man, I've been sparring since I was 14 years old. I was, uh, I was in Taekwondo prior to that. So I've got so many rounds sparring, man, that like, I find now I spar just to remind myself that I still have it. My timing's still there and everything, mm -hmm. but I'm just really not at this point in my career. I'm not a big believer in hard sparring. Yeah, that attitude has really shifted over the past couple of years, especially with the understanding of CTE and concussions, that it's just not worth worth it for a lot of guys because that can have long-term consequences on your health. Yeah, man, yeah. And you, you wouldn't believe the amount of guys I've seen, like, you know, dropped and knocked out and stuff in the gym, you know? And uh, mm -hmm. it's just, it's stupid, man. And And at the end of the day, accidents happen, you know? I like, I'm guilty. I've rocked guys by accident, you know, like at the end of the day, it is still sparring and fighting, you know? Um, but yeah, you want to make it as controlled as possible. And, and that's why I'm also like pretty picky with who I spar with because, yeah. you know, it's like, man, I don't, you know, like in my eyes, it's like, yeah, I could do a hard spar with anybody and I, I like my odds against them. But like, why am I gambling in the gym? You know, I don't, I don't get paid to, to knock people out in the gym and nor do I want to do that. And nor do I want people to try to do that to me, you know? So it's, sure. it's just training, man, you know? And uh, yeah, it's good to have good sparring partners. Who's your, uh, do you have a main sparring or training partner now or a group of guys or how does it work? Um, I've got a group of guys. Um, not really any, any names. Um, there's a guy, Christopher O'Toole. He's a, uh, He's got his first amateur fight coming up on the same card as me. Um, he's a national champion wrestler. 
big, big, strong kid, man. So he's been, uh, he's been one of my main training partners as far as the grappling goes. Um, and aside from that, man, you know, like being in a small town, you know, I've got a couple of guys that I'm just tight with and, uh, have, have experience and, uh, yeah, organize a lot of my sessions that way. Nice. So you've been vocal in the past about you believe that you are the top 170 pound fighter uh, in Canada right now who's not signed to a major organization. Do you still have that attitude about yourself? And how does that look coming out of uh, FLA 13 with a victory? Yeah, damn right I do. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Um, and that's no disrespect to to anybody else. You know, there's some mm-hmm. there's some great other welterweights in Canada, but uh, yeah, I, th- I think as a fighter, you you have to have that confidence, you know, and um, you know, and I think um, I think a lot of fighters and coaches would would agree with that statement. So uh, you know, I, I think I'm up there. You know, there's there's arguments for other guys. But I think I'm definitely mm-hmm. up there, you know, with the argument, top three, top, top mm-hmm. five, number one, you know. There's only one way to really, uh, for sure, say who's the, who's the top, and that's you have to have a fight. So, you know, you're doing what you have to do. You're getting those fights under your belt and, and seeing, and you're adding to your legacy every event. And, uh, yeah, I guess like, you take it from there. Yes, sir. All right, Christian, I, I think we're done, my man. I don't have anything else to ask. Did I miss anything? Is there anything you'd like to mention? Oh, no, man. The only thing I'd plug in is, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks to all my training partners, all my coaches, all my sponsors and in my city in general, man, all the gyms that support me. Um, you know who you are and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for you guys and I'm, I'm excited to, uh, bring home another belt, hopefully. All right. Well, from MMA, uh, hopefully you stay safe and healthy and so does your opponent and the fight happens and we wish you the best of luck. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it, man. My pleasure. There you go, fight friends. Christian, the Tiger Savoie, half of the main event at Fight League Atlantic 13 in Moncton on February 3rd.